people have this arrogance where they're like, if I have to communicate, it's not real. In this world, especially because of movies and shows and songs, it's taught us that if we have to explain it, then that person doesn't love you. They should be able to mind read and predict and stuff, and then it creates the ingredients for a distant relationship. Communicating effectively is essential. Why do we try to change people from who they are to fit our world? Because we're too insecure to walk away. Wow. Waiting for them to change is just waiting oh for the gosh. divorce. When you enter a relationship, a part of that should be to respect it enough to let go of relationships that don't serve the new relationship in a way that's yeah. going to be constructive. Just because I have the ability to have a very platonic relationship with an ex doesn't mean I should have the willingness to do it if it disrespects my current relationship. How many people in relationships feel alone in the relationship? I would say, um, particularly in the cultures where we live now, I think majority of them feel alone. And the reason being is I think you gotta have a dream. The school of greatness. Really? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome Lewis House. I've interviewed a lot of people over the last 10 years, and typically when someone has a lot of wisdom like yourself, they they don't get to wisdom because everything was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, everything was happy and yeah. safe and comfortable and life was good. Yeah. There's usually some challenge trauma breakdown at some stage of their life you know if they're maybe they were in a marriage that went one way they got divorced and they realized like oh there was a pattern that i lived or something happened and mm -hmm. so i'm going to go down this path because i had this experience yeah it was a childhood thing or something like that uh -huh. what do you think makes you so wise around these concepts of relationships and also great context you're not married you don't have kids yeah so there's going to be people saying, well, she doesn't, you know, she's speaking about this, but she hasn't really experienced relationship yeah. at this level. Uh -huh. What makes you qualified to have this wisdom uh -huh. with where you're at in your life? I don't know if it makes me qualified, but I would say that there has to be a healthy level of trauma to ignite this level of curiosity towards human nature. And I think in my particular case, I faced a lot of neglect, particularly from siblings. I was very much like the middle child, very much neglected, very much by myself. Um, and the thing that was really bizarre for me is I'd be such a big personality outside of the home. I had so many friends and so many people would gravitate towards me. And then I'd go in my home and my siblings would totally ignore me and act like I don't exist. And I would be spend countless amount of time by myself in my bedroom while they would have a great time and I could hear them laughing and joking and stuff and I was automatically kind of in between two worlds and so what would happen is I understood that the reaction I was getting outside of the home was not the same as I'm getting in the home and it was causing something in me I remember feeling like I know I'm worthy of love because everybody else seems to love me loads but I don't feel worthy of love because the people I want it from don't give it to me so because I had this kind of dichotomy of like self-esteem, I then realized how self-sabotaging I can be and how difficult I can be. I, in so many relationships when people would be so low, and even to this day, like if somebody compliments me, I find it so difficult to accept a compliment and I start to dislike the person who's complimenting me. Really? Absolutely. So if I don't want to be your friend, I'll be nice exactly. to you. Exactly. All my, all, <laughs> all my closest friends. I mean, if I don't want to be your friend, exactly. be nice to exactly. you. Exactly. It's the quickest way to get me to dislike you is to give me compliments. Really? Absolutely. All of my closest friends are hypercritical of me and I keep it that way. They'll say to me, that looks bad, or you look terrible there, or you've gained weight. Well, I think <laughs> honesty and honesty. feedback is great. Yeah. You know, it's also a great resource for a friend as opposed yeah. to over complimenting something that's not yeah. true, maybe. Yeah. So there's some, you know, there's some element of balance, in, that balance yeah. in there. But uh, there, there's a strong dislike towards people who compliment me a lot because a part of me believes they're lying to me. And it would probably be because at home I never got a single compliment. Till this day, I don't think I've ever had a compliment. So I think what happened is, my home life and my self-esteem were so uh, separated from my confidence. I had loads and loads of confidence, but no real self-esteem. And I saw how on the surface I come across really well put together and really like, uh, you know, confident, all these things. But when you get to know me, especially when the way my partner knows me, they see all of these insecurities and all of this pain and all of this thing. And this like, that, that Saudi I met and the Saudi that like is now in love is two different people. Really? And me realizing that made me kind of go down this journey of understanding human behavior in a way that I guess requires a bit more empathy than somebody who would have it completely perfect. Yeah, so yeah. you really 
you've really researched a lot. Though. Yeah. Did that do that the same for you when you with Absolutely. your children? Absolutely. I yeah. mean, again, being the youngest of four and kind of being feeling like I was always the one left out, right? Yeah. Like my other, I was a you know five, seven, eight year old brat, you oh. know, just running around yeah. trying to get attention from my older siblings. Yeah. They're off with their friends. They mm-hmm. don't want anything to do with me. Right? I understand. Yeah. I'm I'm four years younger than my other sibling, and then eleven years old, younger from my brother. So. They don't want to hang out with a five or seven year old. It's, you know, it's, it wasn't, and they had their own stress. Yeah. So I don't blame them, but I felt very alone my whole childhood until I turned 13 and I left home. Yeah. And I, and I was like, I can't deal with this pain anymore. Get me out. And that, that, and I was telling you beforehand, that made me an observer of human beings. Yeah. My whole childhood, because I didn't feel like I belonged or fit in or was accepted. Uh huh. Which I think a lot of people feel in, in some instance in their life, they don't feel like they belong, they fit in, or they're not accepted in some way. Yeah. I felt that until I was 13, really. I sat and watched people and I observed people. What makes them react a certain way? Why are they in this energetic state? What makes them, you know, cry? What makes them laugh? Why are they reacting to this? You yeah. know, what what was it? And so I just would watch people all day because no one would hang out with me. Right, okay. I would watch people at school. I'd watch people, you know, and on the streets. I'd yeah. watch my siblings. I would just watch because no one would want to spend time with me. Right. And that became an incredible skill set of Lenka. understanding people. Oh. Of seeing people and having compassion. Yeah. Of seeing people and learning how to connect mm-hmm. better. And it's an ongoing journey and a process. But, you know, that pain for really decade plus became something that was a superpower in yeah. a sense that like allowed a me to allowed me to have curiosity uh-huh. someone like yourself being like tell me more yeah i want to learn yeah. i'm fascinated by what you've experienced what you've learned and why this pain or this challenge affected you to be this way yeah because i know what affected me to be this way than i am yeah and it actually made me very androgynous. Um, the thing is, sometimes the comments I get is, oh, you're feminine. So, but I actually consider myself really, uh, I'm not this non-binary, all this stuff. But mentally, I think my content tends to be quite gender neutral. I kind of talk about men and women quite equally. But it was because I was um, left out from my sisters, girls. So what happened is I didn't identify with being a woman. And the other thing that is really interesting is when I was the third girl in my culture, Pakistani culture, you want boys. So when I was born, my parents were hysterically crying. Oh they couldn't gosh. believe they had a girl. They were crying their eyes out to the point where the nurse came in thinking I stopped breathing. And like, we didn't want a girl. We really didn't oh, want a girl. No, and so what happened That's is sad. I grew up with almost like thinking I'm not a girl in a way. Like I'm not one of the girls. I'm not one of the girls. But I am so feminine. So what would happen is I would always have more male friends. And I'd always understand the male brain a bit better than the female brain because I always saw females as like people who don't like me. And males would always be really nice to me. So I always kind of understood them way better than, and being a woman, I understand women, but I got this insight into the male brain that I couldn't have accessed if I wasn't so segregated from my sisters. So it actually helped me academically and in this career path, maybe not emotionally, but it definitely helped me in this way. Yeah. It, okay. Uh, there's a few things I want to talk about, there, <laughs> but something came up for me in a, in a heterosexual relationship. Yeah. What is it? that men really want versus what women really want based on your experience growing up with men and understanding the yeah. male brain and being a woman what is it that men really want and that women really want and if each opposite knew this uh-huh. they would have a much better relationship i think for men the ability to be uh, completely unapologetically themselves and have their needs predicted is something they can't do anywhere else in the world what I mean by that is for women, um, my best friend, for example, she'll know when I'm feeling low and she might get me a chocolate. Or uh, my other best friends, I know I can call her when I'm stressed, sad, whatever it is. I can outsource this ability to have my needs met and without saying a word because women tend to be quite emotionally intelligent. And I have the ability to be myself, vulnerable, happy, sad, whatever it is. For men in the real world, they have to be a man. They have to wear a bit of a mask. So they have to look like they've got it put together. They have to look like they're in control. They have to look, they have to look, they have to look. So if they can go home where they can take the mask off and still be loved and appreciated, that an appreciation for them isn't just a quick thank you. It's also like, I know you're tired. I know you're hungry. I know you need to get up early. So I, I'm just turning the, I'm putting the kids to bed. I'm just turning the volume off. I know you need to get to bed. That is a form of appreciation for them. So I think if they have a woman or an environment where they can take the mask off and their needs can be predicted 
it's something that they think they can only dream of. They don't know that that actually exists for them. Would you agree or do you like, what do you think for, from yeah, your perspective I mean, as be, a man? I, I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean I think I can speak from my perspective and maybe like male friends that I talk to mm -hmm. who are, um, you know, business owners who have, you know, multiple responsibilities beyond themselves. Um, and they have lots of employees or th something like that yeah. or a brand or something is that there is a weight. There is a weight that these men feel and that I feel at times. And I'm not saying, oh, woe is me. I have a weight or something. It's just, you've got to show up responsible for people more than just yourself. You've got to show up and deliver not once in a while, but every single day. Yeah. And I welcome the responsibility. I'm blessed to have Praise the opportunity yeah. and the responsibility to have a vessel physically and emotionally and mentally and spiritually to carry the weight that, uh, you know, has been given, provided for me. I'm blessed. And that's why I train myself physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally to take it on where it feels light. Yeah. So that it doesn't weigh me down. But that doesn't mean there aren't days when it isn't challenging. Yeah. And just wanting to be able to go and relax and feel peace at home is the highest currency mm -hmm. and what feeling is accepted peace? and and having a sense of peace yeah and what would that look like for you, from you? i mean i get it almost every night so uh, I, feel, I feel blessed right yeah. um and that's 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 why i feel even more peace um because of that and i but i why i'm blessed is because i know the complete opposite of it i know being and i'm not blaming anyone no. it's just i know what it felt like to not feel that yeah and it feels more weight is is out on top of you and i'm not saying it's the woman's responsibility or this and this it's really just i didn't choose correctly and that's yeah. okay and i didn't communicate the right way and i had healing to do and all sorts yeah, of stuff so i would not... agree i think peace is definitely created i know a lot of men say they want peace but usually the men that are like ah, oh, dying for peace and can't find it it's either they've chosen super chaotic but they might be engaging behaviors that are also not conducive 100%. to peace yeah. they don't have self-control they don't have self-control they're coming home late they're drinking yeah, too much yeah. they're watching pornography and then and then they scream at their wife like why can't you give me peace but honestly when you meet a man who selects wisely and has self-control peace is an inevitable outcome yes he doesn't have to ask for it so i'm hearing you say like a man that can have someone meet their predictable needs yeah. correct as which a form a of appreciation as, as a form of appreciation well, which there might be women saying, well, how am I going to predict when he can't predict what I want? Uh -huh. When he's not reading my mind, when he's not, you know, there for me when I tell him everything's fine, but I have actually have an attitude and I'm not showing that everything's fine. How am I supposed to predict and be there for him if he can't do that for me? Um, because you have to ask yourself, do I like that he doesn't do that for me? Do I like that experience of him not seeing it, not doing it, so and so? But if I don't like it, then surely why would I create that also? Why would I emulate a behavior I dislike? So perhaps you can role model the behavior you like and also manage your expectations. What I mean by this is when somebody isn't predicting your needs, men and women, or isn't doing it, is it deliberate? Is it that, oh, you, I'm not going to do it for you? Or is it a case of, oh, I, di I didn't know, let me help. So the reality is, are you communicating it before you get angry? And communicating early on. Early not on. after you're married yeah. and saying, this is what I need. Yeah. But actually communicating early on, this is something that I take I did differently and so did Martha. We we communicated early on, this is what I'm gonna need now, this is what I'm gonna need in the future. It's not like these crazy needs. No. It's just like this is to be in a committed relationship, to commit and be all in and be giving and of service and thinking about a future together. Yeah. Here's what I'm gonna need. And here here's what I'm willing to do, here's what I'm not willing to do. And it's so wild because if any job description, anything like that, we'd want to know exactly what to do in order to get them uh, uh, to get promoted or whatever it is. And it doesn't mean there's good, it's not going to grow and evolve and there's going to be, you know, flexibility, yeah. but it's like at least communicate at the least basic can. needs. But people have this arrogance where they're like, if I have to communicate, it's not real because they watch too many movies. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so what's happening, especially in Western culture, in any other culture, in any other period of time, it's like, of course you tell people what you want. How else are they going to know? But in this world, especially because of movies and shows and, and songs, it's taught us that if we have to explain it, then that person doesn't love you. They should be able to mind read and predict and stuff. And then it creates the ingredients for a distant relationship emotionally. So I think um, communicating effectively is essential. So what is it that if a man truly knew what a woman wanted, they would have a happier, healthier relationship? 
Uh, it's difficult because it, it all depends on if you've chosen a woman who is healed and not so chaotic. Essentially, what they want is to be be protected in a way that nobody else can. And what I mean by protected, it can be financial, emotional, whatever it is. But it's a way if I'm protecting my woman emotionally, I'm not engaging in behaviors that will humiliate or hurt her. If I'm protecting her financially, it means I'm giving her my best. Doesn't mean I'm giving her everything, but the best I can do. If I'm a taxi driver, I'm you know covering what I can cover. But if I'm somebody who's frugal with her, she will always feel like or she she's more powerful than you. And whenever she feels like he's not protecting, she feels more powerful, and then she becomes disrespectful. But when she has a man that's protective of it, of her, both her safety, her emotions, and finances. She then keeps, allows him to take control. And whenever we feel more powerful than a man, we feel unsafe. And that unsafety makes us disrespect him and then look for other men. Wow. It's almost evolved. So therefore, if he can protect us in those ways, we, we remain feeling safe. So it's essential. So what's the number one thing that makes women feel unsafe from the man they're with? I would say that showing a, a complete disregard for her emotional well-being. And that doesn't have to be sleeping. It doesn't have to go that far to sleeping with other women. It might be as simple as not replying to her messages or, you know, beh behaving online, like liking it. I know it sounds so bizarre, but you'll be so surprised at how unsafe a woman can feel simply by watching whose pictures he's liking and commenting and saving. It's such a simple thing from a man. But from a woman's perspective, it almost ignites her fight or flight response. Is that, is that weird to a man? Um, Wait, does it more for insecure women? I think to a conscious man, it makes sense. Yeah. That you're like, okay, would I like her doing this? Maybe you wouldn't, but I mean, maybe it wouldn't matter. Like mm -hmm. for me, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what she does. To, yeah. To because be you've established that trust. Yeah. And, um, and if we haven't created an agreement on something, yeah. then she's going to do what she wants to do. And then yeah. I would just acknowledge and say, Hey, I don't really like this. Can mm -hmm. we, can we make an agreement on this? Yeah. And if, and we'll figure out what that is. And then, cool, we've created a new dynamic, right? Oh. But, but I also just feel confident with who I am. Yeah. And so if she's off doing something, which she never has, and I don't think she would ever do yeah, it, yeah. but if she's off doing something, and I, I would find out of it eventually, and I'd say, okay, well, that's unfortunate, but I guess this isn't the right fit, or we need to figure out how to mend this. Yeah. Or I'll be okay. If you yeah. want to go live this life, that's fine. It's so just that not going to be with me. You yeah. know, it's like, all right, it's sad. It's unfortunate. It's... It's, that's the healthy way to see it because a lot of people think addiction is a testament to how much you love someone. The fact that you can't let them go must mean you really love them. But actually, it means that you haven't established healthy boundaries right. and you don't have any self-esteem. But there, Yeah, but there's also probably like certain things that Martha may want to do that I wouldn't do myself. And maybe it's not like the highest value that I would have or with my time or my energy or whatever, but it's who she is. It's unique to her. So I'm going to accept her for who she is. And I've chosen. Hi guys. Now, one of the questions I get asked the most um, since I've been online is what books do I recommend? Is there any books that I can read to help me understand like some of the things you talk about? What self-help books did you read to get here? Now, um, a fun fact about me is I suffer from very extreme ADHD. I am very much incapable of reading an entire book. I haven't read a book um, cover to cover since maybe I was 15 years old, uh, unless it's for work, unless it's an academic a reason that I need to read. I won't read and um, but I really realized I'm missing out right because there's so many amazing self-help books out there there's so many great books for relationships there's just so much information out there that you can't really capture without reading a book and so I started looking online and I found this incredible website called short form and what short form does is takes all of your best-selling books from any genre whether it is um, from like self-help autobiographies all types of topics and it simply condenses it for you so you can read an entire book or understand the entire gist of the book by sim within 10 minutes or so and I literally go on there I download a few of the best books on there and I read them while I'm on the plane or I'll know when to save them and I might just skim over some of the uh, really important details before I go onto a podcast so for me it's been a real time saver it's been a real life saver because I've learned so much on it and I really really highly recommend that you go to www.shortform.com